Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to share a recipe for a sorrel sponge cake. And I know I haven't shared a recipe for a sponge cake yet, but I figured since it's Christmas, let me hype things up a bit and add some sorrel to it. So if you all want to see how I do this sorrel sponge cake recipe, keep watching. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a sorrel syrup or a glaze or a concentrate. And this can be used to actually make a sorrel drink. And in this video, I'm going to use that to glaze my cake and I'm also going to use it in a fruit cake. So you'll see that video in the future. I'm using this dried sorrel that I got in the Kalaloo box. I'll have their information listed in the upper right hand corner as well as the description box below. So I'm going to add some dry sorrel to the water. If you want, you can use some fresh sorrel if you have that. And after a few seconds, you'll notice the water starting to get a nice dark red color. I find that when you do the fresh sorrel, it's not as dark and potent as this dry sorrel. So I'm going to start flavoring up this sorrel mixture. First, I'm going to add some bay leaves, and this is the bay laurel leaves. If you could get the cilamond leaves or the leaves from the bay rum tree, I think that would be even better. So I'm also going to add some cinnamon. I got this straight from Grenada, so thank you to my friend Lisa for bringing back some nice fresh cinnamon bark for me. And if you don't have the cinnamon stick, you can just use a little bit of powdered cinnamon. So I forgot to mention that I have my heat on very low because I want this to simmer. And I want all the flavors from those roselle or sorrel leaves, I want it to be extracted from there and go into my sauce. Next, I'm going to grate a little piece of ginger in there. And this is going to give a nice spiced kick to that sorrel glaze or concentrate. Next, I'm going to grate some of that orange peel in there because I want that citrusy tongue. And instead of the orange peel, you can add a little bit of orange juice if you want to. Or you can add both. I'm also going to add a few cloves. I find that cloves gives it a really distinct flavor. And if you want, you could add some star anise as well. I don't like the flavor of it, so I don't like to add it. So what you want is a nice simmer on this sauce. You want all the flavors to be extracted from those roselle leaves or sorrel leaves or the sorrel flesh. You want all the flavors to come out of there and you want it to marry together with all those spices that we added. And it's going to make for a really nice sorrel concentrate or syrup that you can add to your cakes or whatever you want to add it to. So I'm going to leave it for about 15 minutes to simmer on that low heat. And then I'll come back and we could strain it and use that nice sauce to create a syrup. So after 15 minutes, I left it covered and I turned the heat off. And I just let it steep in there for a little bit. So for about 10 minutes, I just let it steep. And now I'm going to strain it and I'm going to take those sepals out because I want to use that for a fruit cake. So I'm going to put those aside and if you want it, you could blend it up and you can add it to this sponge cake mixture as well for some extra flavor. Or if you wanted a nice chunky glaze, you could also blend it up and add it to that sorrel syrup. So now that I separated the sorrel sepals as well as those spices, now I'm left with this nice mixture that I'm going to turn into a syrup. So I'm adding some brown sugar to it. You can add white sugar, you can add honey, or you can even add an artificial sweetener if you want. But I can't promise with the artificial sweetener, I can't promise it's going to get thick like a syrup. So you just want the sugar to dissolve and you want it to simmer in there for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it develops a nice syrupy texture. So you don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. So after 15 minutes, the sorrel reached a nice consistency. It's like a very syrupy texture. And as it cools, it thickens up a little bit more. So don't be too worried if you find that it looks too watery. Because as it cools down, you'll see it starts to thicken up. So now just set it aside, let it cool. And if you're not going to use it right away, put it into a glass bottle, put it in your fridge, and you can use it up to about three weeks to a month. And make sure it's completely at room temperature before you put it into the fridge. So here's what you want to do. You want to crack your eggs into this basin or into the mixing bowl that you're going to use. To the eggs, add the sugar. And you just want to whisk that. So I have some water here that's nearly up to a boil. It's on like medium low heat. I'm going to put the basin over it. And I'm going to just whisk this continuously. And I want it to get to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and you want that sugar to kind of dissolve in there and remember you can't do this too at too much of a high heat because you can cook the eggs and you don't want that so you have to check the temperature constantly so I'm using my infrared thermometer So this is what we call a double boiler where you place a bowl over a pot of boiling water and it's usually done with anything with eggs. So once it reaches 115 degrees Fahrenheit, transfer it to the mixing bowl. Now what I'm going to do is beat this on high speed for 5 minutes. So this stage is called the ribbon stage, I guess because it looks kind of like a ribbon, right? So it's kind of pale yellow in color and it's a very thick batter. I know it's a long process to make the cake but trust me it's going to turn out amazing. And all the exact measurements and ingredients that I used will be listed in the description box below. So you want it to reach the stage right before boiling, so about 97 degrees Celsius and about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna put it in the microwave and I'll show you guys what it looks like after. So I left the butter and the milk for about 25 seconds actually. So I'm gonna put this aside for a little bit and work on the flour mixture. So to the flour, I'm adding a little bit of baking powder, some cinnamon and a little dash of salt because the butter is salted butter, so I don't wanna add too much salt. I'm also gonna grate a little bit of nutmeg So all you're going to do is mix that. So now that your flour mixture is ready, now you want to add it to that egg and sugar mixture. And I just like to fold it in a little bit so that when it starts to beat it doesn't go all over the place. Now I'm going to switch over to the paddle attachment. So you just want to let that mix until everything's combined. So after it's combined, now what you want to do is take out some of this mixture. I'm just going to take out a little bit and put it into our next bowl. Now to the basin that you put that batter in, you're going to add your hot milk and butter mixture. And you want to whisk that in. Try to whisk as you throw. It's just that I can't do two things at the same time because the basin is moving around. But once you whisk it in fast, because you don't want that hot milk and butter to start cooking the flour and the eggs. Now your mixture goes back into the original bowl. And we're going to do one last mix and then we could start baking. So one last thing I forgot to add is a little bit of lemon zest. I like that tangy flavor in it. And you can omit this if you don't want to add it. I'm just going to let that mix in and then I'll turn it off. So once the cake batter is ready and it's well mixed, now it's ready to be poured into a greased baking dish. So I have my oven preheating at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a 9 inch baking pan here and I just put some parchment paper at the bottom and I put a little bit of oil. You can put butter and flour if you want. I just like to use a little bit of oil. You can spray some palm as well if you have that or any kind of oil spray or butter spray. So the parchment paper is just going to help us when we want to invert the cake when it's finished baking and it prevents it from sticking. So I'm going to pour my butter in there. So now that it's into the pan I'm just going to drop it, just to kind of even out the top. So my oven is preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to put it in there for about 35 to 40 minutes or until a toothpick goes into the middle and it comes out clean. So the cake came out the oven about 10 minutes ago and I stuck a toothpick in the center and it came out clean. So that was after 35 minutes. So now what I'm going to do is just take it out of the pan And I'm just gonna remove the wax paper at the bottom. And now I'm gonna brush that sorrel syrup or sorrel glaze over the cake. And I'm gonna do it in layers so that it gets a nice thick 
coating of that glaze on top. I'm going to use a skewer, you can use a toothpick and I'm just going to bore some holes at the top of the cake just so that it holds that glaze and it doesn't leak completely off the cake. And a little tip if you wanted this to actually be a soaked sorrel cake, make your sorrel glaze or your concentrate make it thinner so that it seeps into the cake and gives it a nice moist finish. So I hope you all enjoyed the recipe for this sorrel glazed sponge cake. Leave me your comments below, let me know what you thought of the recipe. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel to see all the latest videos. And if you make the recipe, be sure to send me a picture. You can send it on Instagram, you can send it on my email, even on Facebook. And I know you all have been asking for a sponge cake recipe. You can use this sponge cake recipe in the video. And in the future, I'm going to post a traditional Trini sponge cake recipe. So look out for that one. Until I see you guys again in my next video, bye!